Now, as football fans and Newcastle fans, we are always very, very quick to criticise. And rightly so. We can only judge what we are watching on the pitch. And one man in particular this season has come in for a lot of criticism and had a difficult season on a personal level. But his performances have changed in recent weeks and so has our defence in the process. It's Mr Dan Byrne. And we're going to be talking about on, on this video about how he could potentially be useful next season after what we've witnessed in the last three or four weeks. If you're curious Newcastle fans, and I've got a feeling you are, do us a little favour and make sure you stick around for a lovely little dollop of rag and white banter. Welcome back to Black White Banter, you lovely ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I'm outside a certain little establishment that some of you might recognise. Um, I'm out here, the weather's a little bit nicer, but we're not here to talk about the weather, we're not here to talk about where I'm standing. I just do this to give you guys a lovely little background. What I want to talk about on this video, as I've just mentioned at the start, is a certain Mr Dan Byrne. He's from Blythe. You'll never ever, ever beat Dan Byrne. That's right. The man from Blythe, I'm told he's actually not from Blythe. Let's send that up, about that the better, because I don't think wherever he's from would fit into that song as well, and that's an absolute banger. And who could forget the dance, which I can't really do. Good job you can't see my legs. I think as far as performances go, and we could probably put Mr Sean Longstaff, another local lad, in that conversation. This season has had its ups and downs. As a whole, it's had its ups and downs. But a certain couple of players have come in for more criticism than others, and Mr Dan Byrne... At left back, which is a key point here, has been one of them. He was part of the joint best defence in the Premier League last season, which should not be forgotten, which should still be part of any conversation about whether you think he is capable of playing left back or whether you think he is not. But you can only judge a player on the now and the here. And this season, he's been targeted um, by clubs. I think that's fair to say. We've seen Bournemouth rip him a new one. We've seen Luton rip him a new one. He just hasn't looked as comfortable against Pacey players down that opposition right-hand side in his left as what we saw last season. And did he have more protection last season? I think that's very fair to say. This season, our midfield options has also affected our defence, in my opinion, with Joe Linton and Joe Willock. And, you know, Anthony Gordon puts the graft in, which I'm going to talk about on another video this week, but we haven't had that protection in front of the back four. And it's cost us, and we've conceded an absolute ton of goals. And I think Dan Byrne has been protected in that sense, and it's made his performances and his record as a left-back a little bit better. So let me just go full circle blah, 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 and give you a reminder. Now, in the last five matches, we have only lost one game. That awful night down at Selhurst Park, where personally, I thought the opposition were very good, and the only way you beat very good opposition away from home is if you are better, and you have a better tactical plan, and you do things on the pitch better. We did not do anything well, and we rightly lost the game. Hey... With injuries, with everything considered, our point haul has not been too bad lately. We can dust ourselves off and forget about it this stage of the season. But generally speaking, we have picked up a draw against Everton in a match we should have been dead and buried before Paul Dummett decided to turn it into the Undertaker. We have beaten Tottenham comfortably. We have won away at Fulham, which is not an easy place to go, can I just say. And again, on Saturday, we smashed a certain Sheffield United by five goals to one. Now, what does this say for Dan Byrne? Well, Dan Byrne, in all of that time, has been changed from Eddie Howe. Was it because of injuries to Lascelles and Botman? Yeah, it probably was. Otherwise, Dan Byrne, in Eddie Howe's mind, is maybe not used in the centre-back conversation as much. But it's also because we have tactically changed things a little bit and inverted to three at the back um, with players like Elliot Anderson and Lewis Hall working in Elliot Anderson's case, as almost a makeshift left-back against the likes of Tottenham. And again, at Crystal Palace, when the tactics didn't work as well. Dan Byrne has come in at centre-back in some of those matches and changed his position a little bit. And what do the stats say? Which I'm sure Dan Byrne, when he's having a drink in his local pub, will be telling people. Well, in the last five games, we have only conceded four goals. Two of them came in that away defeat at Crystal Palace when everything went wrong. Before that... Before Dan Byrne's position was changed, we had conceded 58 goals in 29 matches. We have now conceded, since Dan Byrne's position has changed, four goals in five matches. Do you want to know the average goal per game percentages of those two? And I know what you're going to say. You cannot compare 29 matches to five matches. But I'll tell you what, it's not a bad little start. 
two goals per game before Dan Burns' position was changed, and now we are looking at 0.8 goals per game. Picking up, can I just say, a lovely couple of clean sheets along the way. Away Fulham, away clean sheets. That's been a thing, thing that we haven't really known. It's been foreign to us against Tottenham, a Champions League chasing side above us in the table. We have looked a lot more comfortable, and I am not going to do this video by claiming that the reason, the sole reason that we have started picking up clean sheets is because Dan Byrne has been moved to centre-back. The point of this video is to open up the conversation about Dan Byrne in some uh, fans' minds, which I understand being surplus to requirements in the summer. We are not in a position, in my opinion, where we can get rid of 20... Well, 20 is an exaggeration, but there are lots of fans out there who think we should be getting rid of all dead wood. In my opinion, that is not happening in a million years. Yes, there will be some players who are moved on. Yeah, you, the likes of your Matt Ritchies, your Paul Dummett, I fully expect to be leaving the football club. But Dan Byrne, I'm not so sure. And now I'm going to tell you why. First and foremost, the most basic one, his performances recently. I've just alluded to it, the clean sheets, the more stability I've seen in defence. And generally speaking, some pretty decent performances from Dan Byrne. And look, again, I'm going to keep repeating this. I am not saying that Dan Byrne is pulling up trees at centre-back. But that win against Sheffield United on Saturday that we all expected to be absolutely routine could have been an absolute disaster in that first half. We were lucky. We rode our luck. But one man on the pitch who pretty much single-handedly salvaged um, our draw at half-time to then go on and comfortably win the game was Dan Byrne. And I'll share some photos on the screen of moments. The block in the first half when Brewster goes round Fabian Shea was crucial. The goal-line clearance, and I know it's not on the goal-line, but it is still a goal-line clearance, um... When Diaz rounds Dubravka in the first half. These are all key moments. And Dan Byrne was visibly frustrated at what was going on around him. Because he's a passionate lad. So first and foremost, his performances more recently. Let's just keep the jury out and see whether those continue between now and the end of the season. Because the goals to game ratio since he's changed is pretty good. But the biggest one I want to talk about on this video, which I do believe is worth mentioning. Is I've done lots and lots of discussions in the past about Eddie Howe's tactical changes in matches. Some Newcastle fans were, were trying to claim that Eddie Howe is a one-trick pony. I completely disagree with that, and he has changed things to a degree as the season's gone on. Has he done it a little bit too late, uh, changing that intense 4-3-3 system with all the injuries we've had? Yes, and I've said that that's probably a mistake Eddie Howe's made. But if we are going to be tactically diverse in the 24-25 season, and play three at the back, which I think with our full-back options, Livramento's ace going forward. Lewis Hall, we know what he can contribute at the other end of the pitch. He's proved it even in his short time playing for Chelsea. We do have exciting full-backs, and five at the back is a very, very solid option, as we've already seen against Tottenham, against uh, Wolves a little bit a little bit ago. There are matches when, anyhow, Man City, I thought we put a decent job on Man City in the FA Cup, and restricted them in one of the hardest matches possible. It's never a nice watch down there. But we have changed things. And I think it's important that Eddie Howe has more weapons in his armour next season. Now, Dan Byrne is really important in that. Because how many uh, how many centre-backs can you tell me who can slot in at left-back when needed. But can also play comfortably on the left-hand side of that three. Dan Byrne can do both. So if Eddie Howe started Dan Byrne in a five-at-the-back system but then changed mid-game to four at the back. Depending how the game went, Dan Byrne is a very, very diverse footballer. And if you look at his career, mainly at Brighton, how he was used at that football club was exactly the same. Was exactly the same. I think Dan Byrne is getting dragged through the mud as one of the worst left-backs we've ever seen or anyone has ever seen in the Premier League because we've seen him get targeted a little bit. Yes, he has been targeted. And yes, we know he's got certain capabilities. The stats say that. He passes into the final third. He doesn't offer Anthony Gordon really anything at the other end. I can remember one cross against Arsenal away when he came on as a sub, funnily enough, when he'd finally been dropped to set up Joe Willock's header. But generally speaking, he doesn't offer much at the other end of the pitch unless Eddie Howe gives him a little bit more freedom to or we are really on the front foot. But what we have is a diverse footballer who is proving right now that he is capable and one final thing which I think is really important in this project that we find ourselves in is to get some passionate local lads still amongst the eleven. Sean Longstaff, yes, that's a different conversation for a different video whether you think he should be moved on. I understand his performances have not been great. 
your Jacob Murphy, who's a Newcastle fan, your Elliot Andersons, your Lewis Miley's. These are all important for the club. But Dan Byrne, with the level of experience he has, could be quite a handy man to have around. Do I think that Dan Byrne will start matches in the Premier League next season? Maybe, maybe not. The only reason I say maybe is because Botman's out, who's our big defender, our big money defender. Jamal Lascelles is out for a very long time, so he's not going to be moving anywhere. So we are a little bit restricted, but you would expect us to dip into that window because Fabian Shea, as handsome as he is, is not getting any younger. It's interesting to look at the stats and how Dan Byrne has been playing more recently. And maybe, just maybe, Eddie Howe might rethink where he uses him moving forward. But the fact he can still use him in more than one position, in my opinion, means that we should give some serious consideration to keeping the man from Blythe still at the football club next season. We can't get rid of everyone. Some will stay. And some in my side are quite important in doing so. Get down, Newcastle fans. Give me your thoughts on what you thought of him more recently. I'm sure you're all impressed against Sheffield United when he single-handedly kept us in the game in the first half. But look at the clean sheets. Anyway, uh, get uh, Newcastle... Get Newcastle? Get Black and White Banter across all socials. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. We are going live on YouTube now as well, so do us a little favour. Whack that little like you like you do. Whack that notification bell. And I want more people who follow me to join the live chat. I want to meet as many Newcastle fans and get their opinions on videos as possible. Thank you very much for watching. Go and enjoy the rest of your week because European football is still in Newcastle's grasp. With or without Dan Byrne. How are you, lads?